Okay, we've stepped from the living room into the dining room. Now, most investors will try to find something in here to add costs to your rehab. But if you look around, there's nothing that you haven't already accounted for in this house. Now, you're going to paint the trim. You're going to replace the, you're going to replace the, the wallpaper with paint. And the walls are going to be painted. You're going to replace this, and that's about it. So, you know, we haven't spent a lot of money inside this house already. We've painted it, and we've carpeted it, and that's about it. We've put, replaced a couple pieces of lighting, and that's it. So let's take a walk in the kitchen now. Let's take a look at our countertops now. This is where you're going to give your house a little bit of upgrade, because let's face it, who buys this house? The females do. They're going to spend the majority of their time inside this kitchen. So you're going to make this kitchen nice. You're going to do the, some nice stuff to the outside and some nice stuff to the inside, but this is where you're going to spend some of your money. You're going to basically replace these countertops and you're going to replace them with some nice countertops. This is a 10 by 8 kitchen. All right. If you measured this, it's probably $500 for some very nice cabinets or countertops for this kitchen. Less than $500 really. And you can get some things such as, um, you can either get granite looking Formica countertops like this that make it look really sharp, or you can get Corian countertops or something like that because you're not talking about a lot of counter space. It's very limited counter space, but you want this kitchen to pop. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the countertops. If you replace them with granite, you may have to replace your sink then. So we're probably not going to do that. We're probably going to replace them with the same type of Formica, but we're going to replace them with a very upgraded Formica countertop of some kind. Let's take a look, John, if you can get a shot of this dishwasher. Now most people will say, well, this dishwasher is in good shape. It works, but it's ugly. You know, I'll, you know, I'll have people argue with me. It costs you $200 to replace this brand new dishwasher. Don't try to squip, fit that square peg in a round hole. Remove it. Put a brand new dishwasher in here. It'll cost you $200, $250 at the most. Okay? Same thing with your stove. Come back here. The stove's not in great shape. It's not in bad shape, but it's not in great shape. Yeah, you could pay someone to come in and clean it up if you want. But there is nothing more striking and more appealing to a new homeowner than opening up that oven only to find the warranty in the plastic bag that's brand new, saying it's brand new. Okay, so the, the wife or whoever does the cooking in the home knows that no one else has used this stove. That's an added benefit for them. That's a feature that they like. Same thing with this. If you've got enough space between here and here and you can put a microwave in it, I always recommend putting a microwave in here. If not, you can take this hood, this hood here, maybe clean it up, probably not. For 50, 60 bucks, I'd replace it with a brand new one because I want this to be the central focal point of the entire house. So let's take a look now down at these cabinets. If you look at these cabinets, these cabinets aren't in bad shape. Now, I wouldn't go in and replace all these cabinets because that can get quite expensive. But if you look up here, you see these knobs? Not very nice knobs. So that you, what I would do is I would spend a fair amount of money replacing the knobs, cleaning this off because what you can do is you can take Murphy's oil soap and you can come in here and you can actually wipe down all these cabinets and then there's an old English cover-up product for light wood that you go back over this thing with and will fill in any kind of blemishes or scratches that you have and it will make this thing shine like it was brand new yesterday. So for very little money, you can make these things brand new. And when you do that, you're going to replace things like this hinge here. You're going to replace all these hinges and all these knobs with brand new, nice, uh, up-to-date knobs and hinges. That will make this kitchen pop huge. It will make it just stand out through the rest of the house. And I guarantee you no one else in the neighborhood is going to have that type of stuff in their house. So let's take a look over here in the corner because there's a couple things I want to bring to your attention. We don't have any power in this house yet, so we can't really go into this other room, but there's a couple things I can point out. Number one is this, is this refrigerator. I do not put refrigerators in my homes because everybody likes that. That's a personal preference for most people. 
One of the things you do not want to do when you go into a house and you're looking at it for the very first time is take my advice, do not open the refrigerator because it will knock you on the ground with the smell. You have no idea what's in this. I've never opened it, don't plan to open this thing until we remove it. But you can see this refrigerator is old and nasty. I will not do anything other than pull it out, get rid of it, and paint the back of it. Paint, you know, paint the, the walls. We'll let somebody else come in there. If they want, from a sales standpoint, if they require me to put a refrigerator in, if they require me to put a refrigerator in here, I will do that, but I will do that as part of the sales contract when we sell it, not up front. The other thing to, that I wanted to point out, this is where the washer and the dryer are. are. It's a electric, no, it's a gas dryer. I do not put utilities in there such as a um, washer and dryer. I do not supply those. But you'll notice this door. This door has to be louvered because there's gas going into this um, room. So it has to be a louvered door to allow airflow. This door obviously will have to be replaced. Now this is not going to be like a $40 cheap interior door. This is going to be a more expensive door because it's louvered. But you can find them and you would replace this. So pretty much in the kitchen we're done with the exception of the lighting. Now again, we've covered the lighting in our lighting dollar amount. So I'm going to tell you, you're going to replace the lighting in this entire house for less than 800 bucks. And that gives you brand new lighting throughout the entire house. That includes the ceiling fans in the rooms, as well as the lighting in the kitchen and so on and so forth. The only other thing that we haven't talked about is we haven't talked about the floor. There's a couple options. If you have a little bit of room in your budget, you could put ceramic tile in here and really make a huge difference. Okay? And with that, I would take that ceramic tile. You can see how they have parquet floors that go from this, this uh, vinyl floor to the parquet floor. Well, the parquet floor is destroyed. There's no way you can salvage this. And you know, I'm not a big fan of parquet floors to begin with. Some people like them. I generally don't. But you've got this transitional piece in here. You can either take and put ceramic tile in all of this and carry it into the foyer area, or you can put vinyl here and take and put carpet into this area if you're looking to, to limit your expenses. And in this particular house, in this particular neighborhood, that's probably what we're going to do. We're probably going to put an up, upgraded vinyl in here. We're not going to go fancy in here. We're going to go fancy with the, the appliances. And we're going to go fancy with, we'll change out the, uh, the faucet to put a nice fancy faucet on it. Beyond that, there's nothing really going to be fancy in here. That's going to give it enough pop to make it stand out to the rest of the neighborhood, along with all the lighting that you put in it. Okay, now we're in the foyer getting ready to go upstairs, but there's a couple other places I want you to take a look at. Now, we've looked at the whole house, and everything seems to be in pretty good shape. So it hasn't been anything really wrong. But if you pan down here and you look at this floor, this floor is the parquet floor that we saw from the other room, and it's in pretty bad shape. You could come in here and sand this all down and make it look nice and restain it. But again, I'm not a big fan of parquet floors, so I'm going to opt to pull this up. And I'm either going to A, bring the carpet from all the way around and bring it all the way through here, or I'm going to put ceramic tile from the kitchen into this area right here where the transition pieces are. So that's going to be basically a budget issue. I'm going to look at my budget and say, okay, because obviously by far it's cheaper to put carpet throughout this whole thing than it is to put ceramic tile because ceramic tile is going to cost you about $5 a square foot versus $1.10, $1.20 for carpet. So it's much cheaper to do carpet, but we're going to take a look at it from both perspectives. Now let's take a, take a look into this bathroom. This is the half bath here. One of the items, if you look on my sheet, if you look on my sheet here, is bathroom number one. That's usually the master, and then you've got two and three. Now if you have a half bath, this is what we're going to be looking for. And you're going to be looking for the same thing in just about every bathroom. You're going to look at the vanity and say, okay, is this vanity acceptable? Once we put everything brand new in this house, is this thing acceptable? Now you're going to look under there. Is it damaged under there? Probably not. It's not in bad shape. So that's just going to be fixed and wiped down with Murphy's Oil Soap and Old English. We will change the knobs. 
we're going to come in here and we're actually going to take this wallpaper off. As a matter of fact, we probably won't even take the wallpaper off. Our painters will come in here and they will take drywall mud and they will mud these seams, sand them down, make sure all the blemishes are gone off the wall, and they're going to paint right over the wallpaper. This vanity looks like it's in good shape. I'll make that determination uh, whether I want to replace it as I see the rest of my budget as it's going along. However, how much does something like this cost to replace the whole darn thing? To replace the whole darn thing is less than 200 bucks. So if you've got the budget or create the budget, replace it, it's going to cost you about 200 bucks. To do, do everything in this. Now here's the other thing that I want to point out before I, before I say that. Here's the toilet. And with porcelain, the surface, you don't, it doesn't fade. Very rarely does it fade. So all it takes is a good bleaching of porcelain. And it's not, unless the porcelain itself is chipped or nicked in some kind, or marred in some form or fashion, I hardly ever replace the toilets unless it's an obsolete toilet. The thing that I will replace, though, is going to be the toilet seat itself. Nobody wants to sit on a nasty old toilet seat. So get, do yourself a favor, spend 20 bucks on a toilet seat, and replace the toilet seat with a brand new one. We're also going to replace these, the, like the, the toilet roll holder, and any towel racks that are in here with new, whatever's new to new in style. Now, we didn't look up. So if you look up in this room, you'll notice that, oops, we had a leak. Now this may look like a big deal, but I'm going to tell you, it's about less than $100 to fix because the sheet of drywall is only going to cost you about 20 bucks. $25 and then it, because what they'll do is they're going to take a utility knife and I would not have them patch this this is not what I would have them do this is not going to be a patch job so what I'm going to have them do is I'm going to have them take a utility knife and I'll have them go all the way around every single wall seam and then they're going to pull that whole ceiling down now they're going to put two brand new pieces of sheetrock up there or yeah it would be two because this is a lot wider than four feet they're going to put two brand new sheets of sheetrock up there, have only one seam, and it'll look brand new. You won't ever see it. And the cost is going to be actually less than if they had to try to cut this thing out because they'll spend more time trying to cut that out than they will if they just pull it down and put a new sheet up. So, and the other thing we didn't mention is lighting. But again, for less than 800 bucks in the entire house, we're replacing all the lighting.